Energy Converting Organelles and Endosymbiosis Chloroplasts reside in plant cells and some prokaryotes and convert solar radiation into energy stored in the cell for later use. Photosynthetic bacteria perform this function in their cell membrane. Mitochondria reside in all eukaryotic cells and convert chemical energy from glucose into ATP. Prokaryotes do not have mitochondria. Interestingly, both chloroplasts and mitochondria have their own DNA, separate from that found in the nucleus of the cell. They also have a double cell membrane. Chloroplasts. These organelles convert solar energy to chemical energy through photosynthesis. Chloroplasts are partitioned into three major compartments by internal membranes, thylakoids, stroma, and the intermembrane space. Chloroplasts are about the size of prokaryotes. Scientists wondered if that similarity in size was a clue about the origin of eukaryotic cells. Mitochondria are sometimes referred to as the powerhouses of the cell. They convert chemical energy, glucose, into a more usable and regenerative form of chemical energy, ATP, via cellular respiration. Mitochondria are also partitioned like chloroplasts. They only have two compartments, as opposed to three in the chloroplast, the matrix and the intermembrane space. The evolution of mitochondria allowed cells to become more energy efficient. It was one of the factors that allowed eukaryotes to become more complex. Like chloroplasts, mitochondria resemble prokaryotes in size and shape. Here are more clues regarding the origin of eukaryotic cells. Both mitochondria and chloroplasts can only be created from pre-existing mitochondria and chloroplasts. They cannot be formed in a cell that lacks them. They have their own DNA, and it resembles the DNA of bacteria, not the DNA found in the nucleus. They have genomes consisting of a single circular molecule of DNA, just like in prokaryotes. They have their own protein synthesizing machinery, ribosomes, and it more closely resembles that of bacteria than that found in the cytoplasm of eukaryotes, and they have their own double cell membrane. Konstantin Marischkowski, in 1905 and 1910, proposed the theory of endosymbiosis. Other scientists elaborated on the theory. In 1971, Lynn Margulis, pictured, provided experimental evidence that validated the theory in two articles, Symbiosis and Evolution and the Origin of Plant and Animal Cells. The theory states that two billion years ago, mitochondria and chloroplasts were free-living prokaryotes that were absorbed by other prokaryotes. The mitochondrion was once a bacterium that efficiently converted glucose to a simpler form of energy. The chloroplast was once a bacterium that could perform photosynthesis and create glucose. The theory of endosymbiosis is consistent with the process of natural selection. In each case, the prokaryotes were more successful together than they were apart. At first, they formed mutualistic symbiotic relationships. The mitochondria could furnish the usable energy needed for itself and the host prokaryote. The chloroplast could provide glucose for itself and the host prokaryote. The host prokaryote offered a stable environment for the mitochondria and or the chloroplast. Endo means within, sim means together, bio means life, cis means condition. Endosymbiosis means living together within. Click here to see a video on how we think complex cells evolved. The nucleus formed when a cell membrane wrapped around a chromosome. When taken up by the host prokaryote, the mitochondrion and chloroplast drag the host cell's membrane around theirs, forming their double membranes and new compartments. This was considered a pretty wild hypothesis at first, but it gained wide acceptance and is now a scientific theory. Like all scientific theories, it is supported by strong evidence. Both chloroplasts and mitochondria have the four structures that all prokaryotic cells have, their own membrane, cytoplasm, a circular chromosome, and ribosomes. They also reproduce within eukaryotic cells. 
Over the past two billion years, chloroplasts and mitochondria have become completely dependent on their hosts. They can no longer live freely. All eukaryotic cells are dependent upon mitochondria, and all photosynthetic eukaryotic cells are dependent upon chloroplasts as well. Their relationship has changed over time. The theory of endosymbiosis explains the concept of the mitochondrial Eve. Since mitochondrial DNA is not in the cell nucleus, it is only passed along from mother to child. Animals, including you, inherit your mitochondria from your mother only. This is because the egg from our mothers contained her organelles. Dad's sperm only contains the chromosomes, none of his organelles usually. All of our organelles we inherited from our mothers. Mitochondrial DNA is a way to trace maternal heritage through a family or through a species. The mitochondrial Eve is the first human female that gave rise to all humans. In theory, we can trace all humans back to her through our mitochondrial DNA.